Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Miles Memories Weekly, episode 79. Miles Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How? Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I want to talk some squats, the brand new Warriors of Paradise, and how Games Workshop kind of screwed up their terrain. But first, I want to talk about this video's sponsor, NordVPN. Nord is the most trusted name in VPNs, VPN standing for Virtual Private Network, and not Votan Planetary Navy like I thought it meant. I always have 50 links open on my computer looking for painting inspiration, and NordVPN allows me to browse the internet safely by giving me an encrypted connection to the Nord servers, keeping me safe from hackers and snoopers. And it doesn't end at safety. I am constantly painting, and really what that means is I am constantly watching Netflix while procrastinating. One of my favorite things to do is Netflix and paint. Recently, I just re-binged all of Better Call Saul because the series just wrapped up, but I found out that season six is not streaming on American Netflix. Even worse, there's no release date in sight. Luckily, using NordVPN, I made my computer take a little trip. It takes just a click, open the map, click on a location, and you'll be connected in seconds. It's that easy. Boom! I can now watch the grand finale of Slip and Jimmy. You can use our link to get an exclusive deal, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video and letting me watch all my favorite soaps. Let's get some of the boring stuff out of the way first. The Squat Army Box sold out in about a day. Which is kind of cool, it means that people are really into the Squats, which is good. Some of the factions, I guess the only faction that Games Workshop really came out with that didn't take off was maybe Gene Stealer Cult. They're popular, but they're kind of on the lower end of popular. Whereas Mechanicus and Sisters of Battle, I would consider Sisters of Battle a new army, because they barely existed before, what, 2016, 17? But the Squat Box is sold out, which means that people are digging it, which is cool. And it doesn't matter that the Squat Box sold out because it looks like the Combat Patrol was shown off. Some people have already received their Squat Codexes, and in the Codex you can see a picture of what almost certainly is the new Combat Patrol. And it's pretty much the same thing. You get the Call, you get the three Herkin Pioneers, which the Jet Bikey guys, the ten Hearthkin Warriors, instead of twenty, and no Enire Champion, but you do get five Berserkers with the Mole Cannon. So apparently the Mole Cannon is actually going to be included in the box of the Berserkers. So I actually like this box better because it comes with four unique units and a hero instead of doubling up on some of the squat, just the regular squat warriors. So if I was going to go in for the squats, I think I would wait for, well, I guess I have to because it's sold out, but I would be much more interested in the combat patrol instead of the army box. The army boxes are a little gimmicky and they come with the fancy codex and the cards, but I'm not that big into codexes and I do not care about the cards. But speaking of things that are very, very interesting, I also cut out all of the new Games Workshop turned down for what? No, it's called Into the Dark Terrain. And it's really, really gorgeous and cool, and I absolutely can't wait to play with it. But there is a little bit of... I hesitate to use the word controversy, but there, it's really persnickety. It's really frustrating how Games Workshop engineered it. It's certainly over-engineered. So you've got your pegs and you got your slots and you really, you really force, ugh, you force your wall into the slot and then you take a cap and then you put the cap on top. And now hurricane force winds couldn't pull them apart, which I, it's, it's well done. It's well designed. If, if you were in engineering school, you could get an A plus on your paper or I guess on your, on your model, but for miniature wargaming, this is grossly overkill. Um, there's a few ways I think this could be fixed. I think the easiest way would be... All right, I'll work on that later. I've got more pieces. The easiest way to fix it would be to grind down, grind, not sand. I think it's gonna take a little bit more than sanding. Grind down probably a 30 seconds of an inch off of your peg and that way it just kind of nests into your slot. This one's actually pretty loose. Um, and then you still deal with your caps. But I still don't really love the cap because, you know, it's just going to scrape a little bit of paint every time you're trying to finagle your board together. So I think what I would be tempted to do is grind down your peg and then cut off that little retaining stick up. That way you can just glue your cap right onto the, onto the strut and then it'll just slide in. The, the, I sort of see the benefit of having it all locked together really, really tight, because I can definitely see some frustration of 
trying to reach into the terrain to manipulate your models. And then you knock something over and that's gonna really, really get old fast. But I think it's also gonna really get old fast just really using some effort to build your board every single time. So I think there's probably a happy medium between a decent pressure fit and the Games Workshop locking mechanism that is, is very good, but oh my goodness, Games Workshop. I also saw on Facebook, somebody magnetized this by cutting off the pegs, putting three magnets on their walls, and then they put a nail in the slots. And that, if you do it right, I think that would be amazing. It would probably hold good enough that you're not gonna knock it over or knock it apart. Although uh, my friend Sean, I think would manage to knock it apart. <laughs> I hope he watches this. But the tricky thing about that is there's, there's there's a lot of this terrain and I'm probably gonna get all the boxes because I really want all of this because I think this is gonna be super fun for Kill Team, but also it'd be really fun to play like um, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, or Big 40K on this type of terrain and just see what happens. So it would be kind of a monumental task to magnetize everything. So I think just grinding down the pegs and living with it is gonna be my solution. But yeah, a little, a little frustrating. I don't know, really, it probably only needed one peg, not three pegs and a hook, but it is what it is. And it is very, very pretty terrain. I've, I've, I've seen some slightly more pessimistic takes about this terrain that Games Workshop made it this rigid because they hope that people will just give up and glue it together and then buy the next box so they have more terrain, but no, <laughs> I've, I've built a lot of things and this is good design. The only problem is um, probably the tolerances of plastic and the different pieces. It just leads to, it leads to things just being a little bit too stiff. But it is nice, it is very nice. I don't know, it's good stuff and I can't wait to paint it and build it. It's gonna be so nice. It's gonna take, <sighs> it's gonna take a while to prime it all and get every nook and cranny, but I actually think painting is gonna go really, really quick. Just some good dry brushing is gonna make this really, really look good. But speaking of things that look really, really good, the Warriors of Paradise. These are our new Eons of Battle minis and I really, really like them. I painted them up in a long, one long painting session. I used Army Painter Speed Paints and I, I used Iron Painter Speed Paints, but I don't think I really took advantage of Iron Painter Speed Paints because I did a lot of layering. I think I have a little bit of a crutch when painting where if I want to do a perfect job, I layer. And layering is great if you're amazing. I'm okay at layering. And so I feel like I can see the tra my color transitions a little more than I would like to because I'm lazy. Like if you watch like Lila Mini Witch or somebody who's very, very good layer, they'll do 25 layers to get to get between two colors. Whereas I'll use four <laughs> and then wonder why my models don't look as good. But I really like how these turned out. I think they're lovely. And I have a bunch of Games Workshop's demonettes, but I wonder if uh, maybe I just don't paint them because uh, you know I'll just have Nick print me out more of these. I'm sure he would love to do that. And uh, I can have some, some more demonettes. Right now I have nine, but I need 12 for a proper kill team. Demonettes and kill team is a, is a faction I'm really interested to play with. The demons come in four flavors, three stabby flavors and zinch, which is the shooty flavor. I'm definitely gonna have to give zinch a try because that seems really fun and flavorful. But the demonettes have a speed and rerolls to hit. And so they seem, ooh, they seem like they would be really, really good on the kill team turned down for what terrain because they get that little extra boost of speed and then they get into close combat, re-rolling their hits. Ah, I think the demonettes could be really cool and a flavorful in a Space Hulk because Space Hulks often do have demons. It's not just gene stealers and orcs. Sometimes demons get infested in Space Hulks. Maybe the demonettes have created their own palace and they're, they're ready to fight off any invaders. Yeah, these models are really, really nice. I really like them. They're sculpted by Licorice the same artist who did our animated intro and she did a phenomenal job. These are available on our Patreon along with some really cool gothic turret terrain, which is awesome. Our, our Patreon is pretty cool, you guys. I don't know if you know this, but uh, you get models, you get terrain, you get one extra episode of Eons of Battle a week. 
We have exclusive Discord hangouts, and we also have merch. That's not part of the Patreon, but we we have it. So, but these models, ah, oh, they they're very dynamic. They're very fun. I I don't I don't dislike Games Workshop's Demonettes. I actually think that they're pretty good. I know everybody in the world is in love with the old Juan Diaz Demonettes, and they're they're fine. They are fine. They're good models, but they're just naked ladies. They're just naked ladies. And Juan Diaz sculpted everyone's favorite models. He's amazing. He worked for Games Workshop for 13 years. He sculpted the classic metal demon prints, all of the coolest characters for the old Tomb Kings, most of the Blood Angels. Like, he sculpted everybody's favorite models. And the only thing he's known for is the titty demons. <laughs> What I, what I, the nice thing about the Titty Demons was the posing and kind of the presence that they had. And I think these models capture that perfectly. And what these models have, which I really, really like, and actually Games Workshop is doing this a little bit with their Age of Sigmar Slanesh range, is instead of just having them be weird, like, half harpy, half Medusa monsters, they kind of do feel like folks. Like, these are, I can see them as, as folks, living their lives as, you know, Slanesh demons. Whereas Games Workshop's models feel like just berserk kind of monsters, essence of the warp, which you might think demons are, but demons aren't actually just warp essence. That's what they're made out of, but each demon is a person. They're a fella, and they have their own thoughts and opinions. And so these models have armor that suits them and fits them. They each have a little bit of a different style thing going on. They have different weapons, different poses, different accoutrements. And I really, really like them. They look great together. They look like proper warriors. And I think these would actually work perfectly for a lot of other games. I know there's a lot of miniature agnostic games out there and I I don't really care. The I, I, I appreciate miniature agnostic games and I think that they're really cool. And I don't begrudge anybody who really gets a kick out of them. But for me, I, I wanna be wined and dined by a proper game. <laughs> I want I want them to show me beautiful art. I want them to sell me models, sell me a system, sell me a game, make me rules, have models to go along with the rules, have, make it a whole system that I can buy into, as opposed to just selling me a book and then it's up to me to acquire all of the other materials to actually play the game with. It is cool because you can get, you can do a lot of, um, a lot of things that wouldn't really exist maybe as a larger game, but yeah. But I think uh, for like D&D &D or miniature agnostic games, if I ever were to do them, I'll definitely play D&D. &D. Ooh, and maybe in D&D &D I'll play, what, somebody, somebody in the comments who plays D&D, &D, which, um, what are they called? Guides, factions, classes, classes. Which class do I play as if I want to play as a demonette? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below so that I know what to tell my DM so that they can, uh, they give me the sheet to fill out for one of these. But yeah, I really, really like these bases. And I really like to smell the bases. I had a really fun time with airbrushing, uh, airbrushing marble effect. I've seen a bunch of people do this, but I've never given it a try before. But it's super, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. You just take a wet wipe and you sort of tear it apart just a little bit. And then you airbrush through the cracks. And then it looks like marble. It looks just like marble. It's weird. I wonder if there's like a physics thing about that because like marble and stone and stuff is just created by layers and layers of sediment just like getting compressed and it's got different minerals in it. And so I wonder if there's something with the physics of like wood pulp fiber tearing and sediment crushing that like kind of goes along together. Kind of like um, there's this uh, type of woodworking that's insanely dangerous and should is banned where like you take two electrodes and you let the electricity move through the wood to find each other. And it looks exactly like Google Earth photos of like streams of water and how at the edges of them they kind of spread out into little tendrils and so yeah i wonder i wonder if there's like a physics thing to that <laughs> and speaking of models games workshop showed off a brand new model and i love it but at the nova open games workshop showed off a new character for the sons of bahamut a new mega gargant called king broad and i really really liked that model but it was the fourth model to use the standard Mega Gargant body, essentially the body and the legs. And I think that was pushing it a little because I, I can't imagine you're taking many Mega Gargants in that army, probably one or two. So you can maybe get away with reusing the same legs, but they just came out with their fifth 
Mega Gargant that uses the exact same torso and legs. In the Beast Smasher, the model looks fabulous. I love that he's got a gate for a loincloth. Um, and his legs are identical to all of the other ones because they are all literally the exact same legs. And I feel like the problem with the problem with the giants is that they're fleshy. Like the uh, I feel like Imperial Knights get away with all having the same legs because they're robots. And so there's a lot of not a lot of variety in those legs. Like there isn't flexing muscle and pants. It's just steel. And if you really wanted to, you could just kind of break your legs a little bit to get a slightly different pose. Whereas you can't like grab onto the Mega Gargant's legs and like twist it because then you, it just looks like they have a broken leg. And I don't want to do a bunch of green stuff work to get the legs into a new pose. So pretty lame, pretty lame that it's the identical legs. I do know that there there exists, there may exist some STLs of legs and torsos for the Giants because with the original Gargan model kit, yeah, it comes with tons of extra heads and arms. And so if you have those extra bodies and legs, you can build more models, which is super great to get extra models out of that box because it is a $200 box. The models look good. The models look very good. They're very impressive. I haven't seen one in person. I don't know exactly how big they are, but I mean, judging by the, the new model is holding humans in its hand and they're very small. So it looks like these guys are truly massive, but I, I uh, Games Workshop make make new legs and bodies like you just do it. I don't know. Is it these box? The new boxes aren't cheaper, like because they're reusing parts. They're the same price, 200 smack runes for the same exact pose that you probably already own. So just kind of just kind of a little lame. And like, you know, some people are going to be mega fans. Like if, if the Sons of Bahamut is your only Age of Sigma army and you collect it, you're probably going to get all of these models and there are gonna be five guys who have very cool heads and very cool unique arms and some different chest, you know, decorations. But if you crop the camera down to below the belt buckle, exact same legs. It's just kind of lame. They really should have come up, at least come up with, if there were two leg poses. Cause I think most people will probably have one or two of these things in their army. Two leg poses would be perfect. But yeah, only having one leg pose, one leg and body pose to be used on all of the Gargans is pretty lame. There's also five of these things. Like how many, How have we seen the end of the Mega Gargans? Is it gonna end at five or are we going to every two months get a new Mega Gargant where there's going to be 10? I don't know, if I had to guess, it's we've probably seen the last of the Mega Gargans, but yeah, I just thought that was rather lame. And Games Workshop hasn't done something that lame in a while. It's just weird, especially on like these beautiful, humongous centerpiece models that like people on Instagram take and paint, you know, to the best of some of the best paint jobs on Earth. And uh, they didn't they, they saw the same legs kind of poopy. But, you know, it's not poopy. The Warriors of Paradise. I actually haven't gotten to paint for a little while. And so it was really nice getting to take a little break, sit down for like nine hours and just paint up some models. It was really, really nice. But I do have lots and lots of stuff on the painting desk, so I'm gonna have to get to work. Thanks for watching.